Thank you, Nicole. Um, I'm going to pick up on uh, two, two themes. Um, uh, one of the themes uh, was from Julie and the other was from Nicole, actually. Um, as Nicole indicated, uh, I, I am, um, I've been very fortunate. Um, I've received uh, um, a few awards over the past uh, a few years, and I am, as Nicole uh, hinted, always a little ambivalent uh, about that and I have to confess a little ambivalent tonight. Um, I'm, I'm not ambivalent because um, I don't believe in the mission of Ida B. Wells. I'm certainly not ambivalent uh, because I don't believe in the, in the mission of uh, CUNY's J School where I was lucky enough actually to be a professor for a year. I'm ambivalent because uh, for, for all of the praise, I, I understand how close I came and how close Nicole came, actually, uh, to none of this happening at all. It's expensive to be a journalist. I think that's part of the theme uh, uh, for tonight. And, and it's uh, really expensive if you come from the kind of community as, communities, as Nicole said, that she and I come from. Uh, I got my first job at Washington City Paper, an alternative uh, newspaper in DC. Uh, the world of alternative newspapers barely exists today. But it was where I first got my, my training as a journalist. I was paid $100 a week and 10 cents per word for everything I published. But I was so geeked on the idea that someone would, would actually pay you to ask questions and then to write the answers to those questions. I, I just couldn't, I, you know, at the time I felt like I would do that uh, for free. I'm glad I didn't because I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> I came to, uh, once I left City Paper, I, I went to Philadelphia and took a job there. That, that was not the greatest job in the world. It didn't go so well. I uh, came to New York with my wife. My wife at the time was a copy editor. People always need copy editors. They do not always need writers and reporters. Um, and she basically got us here to New York. And I worked uh, for the Village Voice and I worked for Washington Monthly, James, where I was paid, what, 10 cents a word? Same thing, 10 cents a word. You would work for three months on an article. They'd pay you $300 for that article. And then you would have to call to get your money. They had like this policy that if you did not call, don't send the check. <laughs> I needed that money. You know, I, that was like two grocery bills or, you know, a couple of electric bills. But I, I had all of these moments, you know, when I was in Philadelphia, when I was at the Village Voice, when I was at Time Magazine, and they decided, oh, see, you ain't heard the story yet, though. You're raising your hand back there when you hear the story, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait till I finish. Um, well, I was at Time Magazine, and I can remember them doing layoffs, and I was like the only writer laid off, man. And I came home, and I said to my wife, I said, time to do something else. I want to go be a cab driver. And she said to me, she said, I, I, I think you should write more. So I went on unemployment, and the best thing about leaving Time Magazine was I had this story. And the story was on Bill Cosby. And the story on Bill Cosby, Time Magazine wanted to do like at like a page uh, before I, you know, before they, you know, decided to cut ties with me. And I tried to take it to, you know, uh, a couple other outlets who shall remain nameless. <laughs> they know who they are. <laughs> Might be in the room. Uh, I'm not mad, I'm not mad, I promise I'm not mad. <laughs> but my friend David Carr said, do you know anybody at the Atlantic? He said, yeah, I know the editor, James Bennett. And he made the connection with James and I sent you know, the, the, uh, the pitch over to James and I talked to one of James's editors and they said 8,000 words, $2 a word. And I said, my God. <laughs> I had to sit down, I said, can you say that again? And for the first time in my life, I had the sneaking possibility of actually being able to support myself with writing. I was 32 years old. I had a, a, a seven-year-old kid. And I had a wife that had big, big dreams that went way, way beyond copy editing. That was not a good time in, in the field of journalism. It was only by sheer luck that I had actually worked for David Carr, that we had remained friends that I ended up at The Atlantic and everything else, all these awards, including the one that I, I have tonight, 
spills out from that. But what happens when you come up like that is along the way you see so many talented people, so many brilliant people, people who are more brilliant than you, you can just tell by talking to them and you watch them just fall to the side. Because they can't actually be a part of this because it's expensive. I teach at uh, NYU right now, and I'm, I'm not proud about what I'm about to tell you. I got a, got a great group of kids, and one of the young ladies told me she's about to graduate this year. She is $200,000 in debt for a journalism major. And on the one hand, like, you know, I'm pulling my hair out when I, when I hear that. But entries into the field are just so hard to come by. Training is just so hard to come by right now. And what we have, and I love my time at NYU, but I, I got to be honest about this. I just have to be straight about this. You know, hopefully we'll work on our, our stuff over there. Um, what you have is a situation where people can charge, as far as I am concerned, outrageous prices uh, for people who want to be in the field. But there's one school that does not do that. Yeah. So, so as, as I understand it, um, Sarah, the tuition is 18000 You said what? For someone from New York. That's still good. We'll take that. We'll take that. That's all right. That's all right. So tuition is $18,000. we will just go with that. <laughs> um, and I believe we raised, was it uh, 300000 for Ida B. Wells tonight? So that's somewhere in the neighborhood of... Um, All of y'all are clapping, you should let me finish. So you're committing yourselves. <laughs> committing yourselves right now. So that's somewhere in the neighborhood, I don't know how good my math is, 12, 15 kids who had the opportunity to get great journalism training, training by you know, award-winning journalists. And as we saw tonight by you know, some, some, of our, some of our winners, you know, just the opportunity to make a difference in the field. We need more of that in our lives. We need more of that in our world. I, I wish I had the possibility of that when I was trying to come up. I wish that, you know, uh, I, I had known that this was, you know, uh, something that I could do that would allow me, you know, an introduction instead of spending the time I spent bumping around, really not getting any better. I mean, when I think about my education as a journalist, when I left City Paper in 2000 to the time I came to the Atlantic in 2008, I really did not get better at all. And it was expensive. So here's the deal. It's very nice that uh, we've raised this money tonight. I'm very happy about that. It's very, that's all good. Pat yourself on the back. But on your table, there is an envelope uh, addressed to the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism Foundation. And if you open the envelope, there's a form for your name, address, city, state, zip, email. And then it says, please apply my donation. And the check boxes go 1,000, 500, 250, and then there's an empty. And I'm assuming the empty is for somebody that might want to go over 1,000. <laughs> also appears that you can put a credit card on here also. I don't think you should be happy with 600,000. It's good. It's not enough. The need is so great. And the need is so great at this particular time in our history. Now, I don't know that you have to, you know, uh, uh, put something in that envelope right now at this moment, but you should take it home with you. You should do whatever you can do within your means to edge that up over 600000 CUNY J School is one of our great institutions in this city. I mean that, Barton, I don't just mean for journalism, because you're training people who are going to hold the powers that be the government right now with Trump, after Trump, accountable. We need that. We can't proceed as a, as a democracy without it. Sarah, I want to thank you for this. I want to thank you so much for this. It means so much. The year I spent with you was so, so important. My hope is that we can have more institutions that, you know, share your commitment. And my hope is that everybody in this room will contribute to that commitment tonight. Thank you so much, guys.